Okay, so in this video we are talking about the remainder theorem. Uh, you've already learned how to do the polylong division and the synthetic division and you've practiced that a bit and now we're going to show an application of that and the remainder theorem states that if a polynomial, we're calling that P of X, is divided by X minus C then the remainder is the value of P of C and that would be if you are um, evaluating the polynomial for that value of C. Okay, now what's really going to help us a lot is also this factor theorem and that's telling us that if we take a polynomial and we divide it by X minus C and we get a remainder of zero, okay, then C is a zero of the polynomial. C is a zero of the polynomial and X minus C is a factor of the polynomial. So um, first we're just trying to learn all these skills and then we'll start putting all our skills together and you'll see that knowing this remainder theorem and the factor theorem will be very very helpful for us to um, set up some things for our polynomials. So um, if you see the example here they've got this polynomial P of X and they uh, want to evaluate it for a negative 1 and then a 2. Okay, so you can see uh, down here what they did is they used the factor theorem and the remainder theorem and uh, they're showing some different things here. So like if you look at your solution, first they just plugged in a negative 1 and they got an 18 and since that's not equal to 0, then negative 1 is not a 0 of P. Okay, then down here they use the factor theorem. Okay, and they divided by X plus 1 and they got a remainder of 18. And once again, since you did not get a zero here, um, that is telling you that X plus one is not a factor of P of X, okay? But then when they plugged in uh, a value of two into P, then they got a zero, okay? So that means C equals two is a zero of the P of X function and that X minus two is a factor. Okay, so down here is where you see the benefits of understanding this. So if you, if you know that um, X minus two is a factor, okay, and you can see they put the polynomial inside here and then they divided it out and they got this quantity two X squared plus five X minus three and they got a zero remainder. Okay, so what I can do is I can take this polynomial and I can use this to break it down. So I can say that my P of X is X minus two times, actually I'm not going to have enough room there, let me back up and write this a little further over. My P of X is X minus two times, and I can use this factor that I got up here, the two X squared plus five X minus three. So I use the X minus two with the outcome of that division. And then this factors more, okay? So we can use our factoring and factor that down, and it factors to two X minus one and X plus three. Okay, so you can see down here where they're showing you that P of X can be written, okay, as each of those factors. So we're going to use this skill a lot with our division. So what's going to happen, okay, is we're going to uh, use a factor to do some division and that will allow us to get uh, some quantity and then this quantity and then we'll either use more division or factoring to continue getting this um, completely factored. Once a polynomial is completely factored out then there's there's a lot of things we can do with that since it's in that factored form. So this all of this division and remainder theorem and factor theorem is just going to help us get to this factored form. Okay. So let's just talk through a quick little example here. So first of all, they want us to evaluate P of C, where our C value is negative one. 
Okay, so everywhere you see an X, you're going to put in a negative 1. And just grab your calculator and do some Okay, and we get uh, an outcome of negative 3 there. Okay, so the fact that this is not equal to 0 tells us that negative 1 is not a 0 of P of X. Okay, and we also cannot use X plus 1 as a factor. Okay, um, and so if I was to um, try to uh, use x plus 1 uh, as a factor, then um, we're going we're gonna to run into some issues with setting up that polynomial. Okay, so let's do another one here. I want to show you one that actually does work out. So if you look at number 2, uh, we're first going to evaluate p for the value of 1. Okay, and then you'll just do a little punch it on the calculator there, and you get zero as your outcome. So this tells us that one is a zero, okay, of, polyno of the polynomial P of X. So I can take uh, my P of X function, and I can say that X minus 1 is one of the factors of that polynomial function, okay? And then I can use division, okay, to figure out the rest of this function. So you can use synthetic division here if you want, or a polylong division, either is okay. And you can use, um, if you're using synthetic, you'll set it up with your coefficients. And you'll get that zero. And then these coefficients down here give you the outcome of that division. Once again, if you want to use your polynomial long division, that is perfectly fine. Um, and so what I can do now is I can say that P of X is x minus 1 using this factor that we found a second ago uh, times x squared minus 2x plus 1 using this outcome that we got here. Okay, and then I can see if this factor is more. And it does. You can factor that to x minus 1 times x minus 1. So p of x actually can be written as x minus 1 cubed. Okay, so um, some interesting ideas are building here for us. Okay, and what you're doing is you're starting to put together some of these pieces with the division and the polynomials. And then, of course, we're going to build on this and do more. So uh, just work on your skills, and I'll see you in the next video.